Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing. I'm very, very, very happy to be back. I'm extremely enthused. I apologize that I was MIA for about three weeks. Uh, life happens. I hope you guys can understand and respect that. Uh, there's just some things going on in my life where I really just didn't have the time, but I'm back at it, man. Um, I hopped back into the Yu-Gi-Oh scene. Um, I piloted my Zephyrus today at DNA. I went undefeated again. Um, I got first place and um, I got uh, Flames of Destruction and also Lair of Darkness in store credit. Um, so after I'm done, if the video is not too long, we'll open these. And if not, we'll just open them in another video. But either way, uh, these are the two things that I got for topping. Um, the Structure Deck, the Lair of Darkness, and then uh, Flames of Destruction in the box, which, yeah, I'm really hyped to open that. Um, today, it was pretty interesting. It was only five rounds. Um, I played uh, two Dracos. I played a Spiral Nightmare, which is actually my teammate. Um, his deck is just ridiculous. It, it just is very unfair. I played 60 card Light Sworns with just other stuff that it wasn't really a Light Sworn deck. He was going off though. And I also played Invoked Hand Trap. So um, it was just very diverse. I enjoyed myself on um, my deck. I piloted it extremely well. Um, I was just making boards that people just couldn't really deal with going first and going second. Um, I will hop into the main deck. Um, but if you guys were always wondering, you know, some people are like always asking me, you know, why out of all decks did you choose Zephra? Um, I chose Zephra because um, it's the best pendulum deck to me. Um, it's it's just the inherent weaknesses and flaws that most pendulum decks have. Zephra doesn't have that. Doesn't lose to like barrier and anti spell, and um, it's very diverse. It's very flexible in its um repertoire, its arsenal. You know, you can mitigate or supplement for the weaknesses that any pendulum deck naturally has. Um, it has great recursion, great grind game synergy. It's just a powerful, well-rounded deck. Um, it's not only good at one thing; it's good at m like numerous things. It's awesome. Um, so that's why I've chose Zephyr, and it's just, it's dummy justice. It's very aggressive and very, very control-oriented as well. I'm going to show you guys the build, and um, I'll kind of explain the card choices as I go. So starting off with the main deck, uh, we play three copies of Zephyrath. Um, Zephyrath is the skill that you want to see no matter what. You have, what, three of him, three terraforming, three... You have 12 copies of him in your deck. In addition to playing 12 copies of him, you can always use Electrum to send him to your extra deck, which I kind of do sometimes if I don't see him just to add him because he's that important uh every single duel this has to be one of your skills and every single duel he is one of my skills i also play three zephyr new he's the lifeblood of the deck um he's the engine he searches and cycles through your deck um he allows you to kind of wall up even going second when there's like some of those boards that you really can't necessarily break um walling up with zephyr new and the traps it just forces them to make their own mistakes and then their board gets broken because like they sometimes have to activate effects to get over the stuff you have, and that's where you just bait them out and just kill their cards. Um, so Zephyr Nui is just a standalone card. Um, it's 26. I even consider playing um, Mrs. Radiant just to like have the firepower and you know, and also get the 31 booty out and stuff like that. But it's just, it's a really really standalone card. Um, your opponent is always gonna take that neck off of nine pillars and you plus. So it's like you negate their card and then you get a search while they lose a card, and it's really really strong. This card on um, me just. Allows you to outlast a lot of the other decks. <laughs> then you play Zephyr Saiton and Zephyr Thuban. Um, you're, these cards are like you're going second cards. Like these are very powerful. Um, certain matchups, Zephyr Saiton's good, but Zephyr Thuban's good in every matchup. Uh, he hits face ups. I even hit a sp oh, like a improperly summon masterpiece. It was just um spell trap. Um, I just literally just nomed him and popped it. It was very very sad for that person. Um, and he's just allowing you to hit like floodgate like cards. Um. He allows you to deal with um, just so many different things. It's just crazy. Um, being able to play through boards, like I even um, used him, hit a card, and then went into my uh, Yazi play and then hit another card. And then after that, made Electrum and used Electrum at Purple Poison, Purple Poison, hit another card, broke a whole board practically. Because um, I couldn't Black Rose because like it's just like I had to keep my cards, you know, like I couldn't hit all the cards on the field. So it's just like... It's really, really powerful what this deck can do, how it can uh, just like go first or go second. It's very, very flexible. Uh, then you have Zephyr Wendy. She's going to add your resources from your extra deck to your hand. Uh, Zephyr Wendy is very, very powerful. It's a standalone card. Uh, when you're running out of targets, you just want to normal her and uh, add a resource from extra deck to hand. So that way, when you pendulum summon, you can get a bigger field presence and be able to OTK as well. Then we do play the ones of Fraxi. Uh, to sum up the Zephyr lineups, the Fraxi is here to um, make any of these guys tuners. So that you can go to your synchro play. Synchro summoning is what this deck does more than anything else. Um, yeah, so those are your Zephyrus. Uh, I think it's like 10 or 11. 
And then for the cards that make my deck aggressive, I play three Astrograph, uh, three Chronograph, just kind of your Graph Sorcerers. Um, these make any Pendulum deck a lot more consistent, uh, allowing it to maneuver and play through boards and disruptions. Um, even in a Draco matchup, I activate Zephrath. They activate, um, you know, a uh, Masterpiece to pop the Zephrath. I reveal Astrograph, search, it, uh, search another copy of Zephrath. And, uh, you know, when you're, like, in grind games and you're just trying to... Um, over you know overwhelm your opponent when you like for example i crashed you know a monster and then brought out chronograph and use him special summon master cerberus and that allowed me to just push for game like these cards are very very versatile for going first or going second in addition to that when you open with these you have your electrum play which is very important and um him being a level six allows you to go into other things as well and then we do have uh three master cerberus as well as two Mythical Beast Jackal Kings. Jackal Kings for going first. Cerberus is more or less for going second. Of course, opening with this card is the equivalent of opening with the Graph Sorcerer. It's going to get you a body on the field before you Pendulum Summon, which is important. You know, this deck can Pendulum Summon and then make Electrum, but it's more powerful when you make Electrum first and then Pendulum Summon, obviously. Uh, Jackal King only shined going second today when I was playing against 60 card, whatever it was, because uh, I baited out the snow, the first one. And then um, I was able to negate the second one with this one. And he didn't have enough engrave to do it a third time. So I pretty much just killed him after that. Um, so Jack of King's pretty impressive as well. Um, but I feel like Serpus was one of the MVPs. Um, he allowed me to just play through, you know, like insane boards. Um, and uh, I played a Draco's. I grinded to the very end. And it was like he hit everything I had. And my final play was an Electrum. I had this card. This is the last card in my hand. I made my Electrum. He hit it. And I thought... Oh, wait, his masterpiece is spell, spell. Like, this guy is dumb. So I sent the master service, and then uh, I let the, you know, Evers all masterpiece pop the uh, the, the uh, Electrum, and I just scaled this, brought out him. And it was just like, it was game time at that point. I'm sorry, because I, um, I had terraforming in my hand. So that was it. It was this and terraforming. So I pretty much just terraforming, uh, put two counters, and then activated my Oracle of Zephyr, put two counters again. Uh, it was just, it's crazy. Like, um, these engines, like I was saying, they're very, very consistent, very aggro, uh, very, very versatile, and they allow you to play through boards. Like, it's crazy. Go on second. These are the cards you can see, and um, it'll help you out. Um, and then for my Dark Worm package, I played two Dark Worms and two Donuts. Um, the reason why I play two Donuts is because it's the best scale in my deck. It's a zero scale. There's no restrictions to it. My favorite scales are um, actually Zephrath and Gate Zero. Now, there are other low scales that are not restrictive, like, you know, Astrograph is a low scale that's not restrictive. Um, you know, you can have four scales, and it's fine because you most of the time pill them summon for six or higher. Um, but I like this because it allows me to make boards with, like, you know, counter traps. And, like, for example, again, 60 card decks, sometimes I want to make, like, you know, a board full of negates and then a dweller. And in my Draco matchups, I want to play, you know, I want to search out my traps and then stand by dweller. So if they have a mono Iwato, it doesn't matter. And this allows me to pendulum summon for four, because um, it's a very, very rare occasion when you're actually gonna use Astrograph as a scale. And it's a very rare occasion when you're able to use Zephraf to turn him into a low scale, because for the most part, you're using him to send Zephyr Nui, or Zephyr Neo, however you pronounce it, um, so that you can pendulum summon him and start searching out your engine cards. So uh, two donuts, an incredible card. And another spicy tech I decided to start playing was uh, two purple poisons. Um, so, this card is actually very, very um, clutch. It's like, it's a flex card, um, but it, it won me so many games today. It was an instant out to anti spell. Um, it helped me to just run over Masterpiece like he was a child's toy. Um, it was just, it, it was just insane. Like I had just Astro grab Purple Poison, Purple pop the diagram, hit the Masterpiece, he's gone. So is the diagram. Like it was just insane. After playing through so much disruption, uh, Purple Poison is a pressure card. It's a low scale. Um, that has no restrictions just like donut. Um, it's a level four. It's 21 booty like there's just nothing bad about this card And it throws people off because when you're like playing Astro and Chrono and they bring out Electrum Like they think you're playing Pendulum Magicians Especially when they see this card and then out of nowhere you play as a frat and they're like, all right, what is this guy really playing? Then your one ups you have uh, one Odd Eye Synchron, one Stargazer Magician and one Time Gazer Magician This is an MVP. This helped me in my 60 card matchup I used this to bring back Zephyr Thuban for my scale, made Metaphys Horus, took control of his Curios, and that allowed me to secure game. Um, it was just, it was crazy. 
Like uh, this card is very versatile as well. It can break boards, it can make boards, it can secure the game. Um, it can pretty much counter swing. It, it's a very, very good card and it allows you to make some crazy, crazy first turn combos. And these just come as a package deal. Um, it's not bad to draw these because they are four scales and you can still pin them something with the four scale. So um, the decks um, kind of like its shortage is high scales. Um, Cause you have, you know, you have high skills in the form of Zephyrus, but everything that's not Zephyrath restricts you to only summon Zephyrus, which in certain game states it's fine because <clears throat> I like being able to use nine pillars to negate, hit my Zephyr Nui, and then search Zephyr War, and then play it from my hand immediately the same turn. That's when it's good, but when you're trying to make bigger boards, you don't want to be restricted to only summoning Zephyrus because you want to make, you know, Jackal Kings. You you want to make other kind of boards you want to bring out chronographs to make your Naruto and stuff like that um so it's just very important uh to get your Zephrath because like I was saying you have definitely a lot more low skills than you have highs I think for the highs you have just the uh one two three the three Zephrath then the Zephras and then um the the odd eyes and then the chrono and then when you actually have a magician like if you have purple poison and this then that's a high scale but it's a rare occasion uh so High scales matter more in this deck, but you have Electrum Turbo, so any skill that you're missing, you can always circumvent for that issue if it is an issue, but you'll never be in that conundrum um, because uh, once you learn how to play your deck, you're going to understand um, it's not very sophisticated when it comes to getting your high and low skill. This deck doesn't struggle with that issue. And then for your hand traps, you play uh, three copies of Ash Blossom. Now, Ash Blossom was a two of in my deck, but... um. I had to bump her because there's a lot of decks um, that are playing the new Nightmare Engines and um, the Waking Dragon. Tra there's just like a lot of things. Like Ash has always been the most flexible of the hand traps because there's no deck that she can't touch. But now more than ever, if you don't pay attention to the Nightmares, all of their effects say that you can draw while they're calling. Now, while you're not always going to activate the effect to draw, the fact is it includes an effect that can draw which means that you can Ash Blossom then. Let's say, for example, a Goblin's Co-Linked, and then you're like, Goblin's Effect to get a Normal Summon. You can Ash Blossom Goblin's Effect to Normal Summon because that effect includes an effect to draw. I'm just going off of what Ash Blossom says. It includes an effect to draw, so I can negate it. Just like if, uh, uh, you know, Reincarnation banishes your hand first and then draws, you can Ash Blossom it. Um, so, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel that I am definitely correct on that call that Ash Blossom can negate any of the Nightmare cards because all of their card text does include an effect to draw. And when they're calling, they will draw. And then we play two Ghost Soakers as well. I wanted to play three and three, um, but there's just certain hands where you don't want to see, like you never want to see two hand traps. If you see Ash and Ogre, your three hand, your other three cards in your hand had better be amazing. Um, I don't really care too much for hand traps in this deck. I just play them because I don't want to get FTK, and I also don't want to get a you know a brilliant fusion to resolve on me. Brilliant fusion is normally pretty uh, detrimental on my end. Then I do play the Destrudo. I got the sexy super. Let's go! We got the super. Um, Destrudo is more flexible than ever. This can break boards, make boards, and set up negates. And I'll show you the reason why when we get further into the deck profile. So that's it for your monsters. Then the spells are all good spells. Uh, we play three Zephyr Providence. This is your Stratos. It searches out any Zephyr card. Uh, then we have three Optimus Prime, uh, just your searchers. All the spells are consistent. You play no bad spells, so if you see blue cards, you're normally winning. Uh, and then three Oracle of Zephyr. It's gonna search out all of your Zephyr monsters, of course. Um, this is just more copies of Zephyrath. It's anything you need. It can get you out of binds because you can search Zephyr Thuban, pop a face of card. It just depends on the situation. I also play a Dragon Zephyr. Um, this card has been very, very, very good. Um, it, it's just, it's never done me dirty. Like, it's just been treating me right. Uh, Dragon's Ravine is going to set up your Dark Worm and also your Destrudo. And just by playing the one dark, uh, Dragon's Ravine in my deck, it transforms my Terraformings into not only the ability to circle, uh, cycle through my Zephyr engine, but now I have four more ways to go into Electrum because these all get your Dark Worm. And then you could just normal and make Electrum. So it just, it, everything in the deck is so flexible. It does more than one thing. And that's what I really like about the Zephyrus. You always have options. You're never limited to one line of play. It's nothing linear about the deck. Uh, this can, you know, go for your Black Rose. It can go for Yazi. It can go for a new card I'm playing. It can even just go for the Dark Worm, you know, for your election play. So when you see Optimus Prime, which I nicknamed Terraforming Optimus Prime, 
just know you can either get Zephrath or if you already have Zephrath and you feel like you don't need Oracle, you can use this card to make your Electrum play first. So uh, this, it's just, it's such a clutch, it's such a clutch card. Like it's, whew, it's good, man. And then I play three Dragon's Ravine and I play Foolish Burial. Um, I feel like making Electrum is so important and also having as many ways to get to the Strudel is, um, is just very, very important. Um, the Strudel is one of the only ways that I can break boards going second without working hard. Because um, if I just normal and, you know, get the Destrudel, for example, if I normal Dark Worm, he replaces himself, I get a gate zero. Then I Destrudel after that, I practically Black Rose for free. This deck can break boards without Black Rose, but it just costs less resources, you know, to play a Dragon Shrine in normal and break their board. Um, so it, it's just very important to keep these because, like I I don't main, you know, evenly match. I don't main a lot of hand traps. I don't main Dark Hole and Rageki. So these cards, like the rest of my spells, are very, very flexible. Um, they're good going first, and they're powerful going second. They're actually threats. Um, so, yeah, I love my spells. I would never chain it, change it. They're all really, really good. Um, every game that I opened up at least one spell, it was just, like, amazing because I don't mind drawing any of these cards. They're all, like, they all just cycle through my deck. These all just search extra you know, they're extra copies of the card you already plays. This searches things that you already play. So it's like, it, it ups the consistency of the deck exponentially. Like, this deck is very, very, very consistent. Uh, for your traps, you have two Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing, And then you have two Zephyr Divine Strikes. Um, now, most Zephyr players play one of each trap. Um, I've experimented with this deck for quite some time now. And I found that this deck can grind. And sometimes it has to grind. And the only way to grind sometimes is just through Zephyr Nui, because in a simplified game state, when you can only pin on summon for one, it's you're getting maximum value by summoning your Zephyr Nui, searching out these cards, and stopping what your opponent does. And once you get to that point, once you've negated enough of their plays, you can make Electrum and go in for the kill. And then something I cut, I was playing two wars. I was only playing two wars. It was mainly because ABCs were predominant, and I had an issue with the Mono Waddle where I wanted to pop a Mono Waddle so that I don't have to worry about, you know, my monster effects being turned off, like my Naruto and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, this deck doesn't really lose to a mono. That's why I just cut this card. And the other reason was because when you hit ABC Dragon Buster on their turn, they can't tag out. Um, but I felt like, you know what, one is fine. If if the format defines itself to be something a lot, a lot more different, I might have to change my strategic strategy. Uh, my strategic strategy. I might have to change my strategy. But um, for right now, I feel like 2-2-1 two, two, and one is really good. Um, most people don't even expect for me to have search targets once they've seen three traps, so, which catches a lot off guard. Then for your extra deck, I'm playing uh, three copies of Electrum. I was playing two. A lot has changed. Um, I just go based off of experience. Every time something comes up, I change my deck. I upgrade all of my decks daily. Um, I never let them stay as they are. My decks get better every day, and this is one of the decks that just continues to get better. Um, I was playing two Electrum. The third kept coming up. Um, in grind games, and there are a lot of times where I could go for game, I just need the other Electrum. And while, yeah, you do play um, Supreme King Dragon, uh, what's his name, Starving Venom, like, you just need the actual ability of Electrum. You need the zones that he provides. So three Electrum now. Um, in the board load, I was playing, you know, Skuldrad. I decided um, I might try Trishbania, but the issue with Trishbania and a Pendulum deck is obviously, like, when you're able to summon this, you're, you're using Pendulum skills to Pendulum summon, and then you're taking an egg while your opponent does. The only good thing it could really be is for, like, you know, burning your opponent for game. So I've considered playing it because it can come up, especially against Dracos and Trick Stars. Um, so four links. Then for Synchros, uh, Chao Fang. This was an auto win against um, Spirals. I made this with Earth. Uh, no Super Agent, no Quick Fix, no Double Helix. Long as they can't resolve Double Helix, I'm not even worried about it. Like, I don't care what they have. Um, and I have Counter Traps for days. Then we have X Saber Gotham's. He's part of the combo. Um, you're just you can loop your opponent's hand, or you can uh, hit one and then go into your calamities, and then Cloud Castle because it revives either one of these. And then the new card, bro. Like th this card is a flex card. Um, people are really sleeping on this. I see the potential. This card is amazing. F A Don Dragster. Um, so every board that I made today, where I could get the Shirtle, I made a board today of um a Jackal King. It was a uh, Jackal King, Naruto, um, Double Divine Strike, and this. And it was insane to me because I had one, two, three, four, five negates. And these negates were not just, you know, some, some silly, cute negates. These were like the real deal. And so what I liked about this was 
it, it gains, you know, 300 attack for his level. That's irrelevant. What it does is during either player's turn when a spell or trap or effect of a spell or trap would attempt to activate, he can reduce his level by 2 and negate that effect and destroy it. Now, what, what really stands about, out about this card is it doesn't, not only does it negate the activation of spells and traps, but it negates the effect of spells and traps. So if a true Draco spell or trap hits the grave, he can negate that. If a spell or trap is already faces up on the field, meaning it's already activated and it uses its effect, he can negate that. This card's very versatile. It's better than Naruto, actually. Naruto only negates the activation. This card can hit it even if it's on the field. Read the card, that's how it works. It's it's just insane. So, like I said, it makes Destrudo very flexible and very versatile because now Destrudo can make boards, break boards, and he can become the gate. So he's everything's versatile, everything's dual utility. Everything can get you out of bind. So depending on the situation, Destrudo can do this. Board wipe, he can do this. Summon a boss monster just so to have, you know, protection or even help you to, um, you know, deal with Dracos promptly. Um, and then also um, Don Dragster, like it just, it adds to um, every board you make full of negates, having the Strudel just adds one more negate. And it even unbricks your hand. So FA Don Dragster is insane. Um, it, it never did me wrong. Like it did me so much justice today. In fact, it got me a lot of games. It saved me from Masterpiece. Um, well, not from Masterpiece, but from the Apocalypse Trap um, popping my cards. It, it like, it literally just, it saved it. Because the Apocalypse hit the grave. He's like a fag. I'm like, no, 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 bro. I negate that. Um, so just insane, man. And then I do play Metaphys Horse because he's just a standalone card. There's so many problems that he solves. Uh, he negates. He he mind controls, and your opponent has to give it to you. And uh, it, it's just it's crazy. Like there were games where this literally stole wins for me. And then I do play True King of All Chlamydia because it's very very easy to make in this deck. Um, most decks lose to this deck automatically. Um, even Dracos get slowed down by this deck. So there's no deck that. Um, it doesn't go unanswered, basically. Like, it's not like you make this and there's a bad matchup for it. There's no bad matchup for this card. Uh, then you have Naruto, especially when you're going into time and you just want to stall for turns. If your life points are higher and you prevent your opponent from attacking, they better have a burn strategy. Uh, then you have Naruto. Um, a new incorporation to the extra deck is Abyss Dweller for the Draco matchup and 60 card matchup. So 60 card decks and Dracos automatically lose because uh, you open up with multiple negates and then you add a Dweller to the mix. That's all I was saying. I like one scales and uh, zero scales, so I can pendulum summon four and, you know, make this. This part of my board for just um, more resilience and uh, more layers of protection. Then I do play Starving Venom because he's just retarded. Um, this card is definitely just so absurd. Uh, for my side deck, I side deck uh, three evenly matched. Um, it's a counter to most strategies. It's an automatic win against Dracos no matter how you look at it. <clears throat> we have three twin twisters. Um, everybody loves to cite anti-spells and, you know, true Dracos play a lot of a lot of very annoying back rows. Alter guys are actually creeping into the meta. There's a lot of good calls for Twin Twister. That's why I play it. I do play a Darko and Rageki for, um, you know, more safety precaution measures when you're going second. And then I do play two Kaijus just in case. I just want to be ready. For the most part, I'm not really worried about Kaijuing Masterpiece or anything like that. It's just to hit cards that I know, like, I can't play around. My deck can easily play around one pop for Masterpiece. If your deck can't play around one pop, you might want to like rethink everything that you're doing with it and then a new latest edition i cut my um time lords for red reboot i was playing the water time lord zafion uh for the draco matchup just to hit all their back row and for alter guys but i found this card to be a lot more flexible because it can hit the floodgates whenever they activate it and it makes it to the point where now they can't activate any more floodgates so instead of zafioning all their continuous traps you just red reboot that first activation on standby phase and they're done for that turn um, and it also helps you to um, cock block the, uh, in, what's it called, infinite impermanence when they try to infinite impermanence on turn zero for them and turn one for you. Um, this stops judgment. Um, it even saves me because if somebody resolves this against me, I can't activate any more traps. And that's part of, um, you know, my strategy. So if I, for example, activate a Zephyr Divine Strike and somebody red reboots me, if I red reboot their red reboot and they don't have a response, my stuff goes through and I'm pretty much going to win that duel now. And, you know, it does occasionally negate evenly match. It does hit D-Barrier. It does hit Anti-Spell. It does literally rape Dracos. Um, if they activate Anti-Spell Standby or Standby any Floodgate and you Red Reboot, they're not going to summon Masterpiece during that turn, I guarantee it. So, Red Reboot is just such a good card. I can name so many applications for this card, but um, we all know it's a very, very good card. 
uh, two dimensional barriers for the pendulum matchup, invoke, etc. And I do play a zombie world because I do play three terraformings. I decide to play one um, because it's an auto win against Dracos. My deck does not struggle against Dracos at all. I'm well equipped for that matchup. Um, like, if I have, you know, counter trap, counter trap, counter trap Naruto, and then I just play this, they can't play Yu Gi Oh! anyways. So it just, it's just like insult to injury. And that's pretty much it. I gotta see how we are doing on the time. Let me see something. All right, we are uh, 25 minutes in. So you know what? I think that I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and I'll do a separate video for opening this Flames of Destruction box because I just don't want this to be too long. Um, I'm very, very grateful to you guys for being faithful to me. I am a little sick if you notice. Um, I don't know if you hear it in my voice, um, but I'm gonna be uploading like a madman. Uh, don't forget when I was on my grind, bro, I was hitting like seven, eight videos a day. I didn't care. I, I didn't sleep or nothing, bro. Like I'm very, very committed and dedicated to what I do. And I'm back on it, man. I promise I'm going to deliver for you guys. I give you my word. I love y'all. God bless you. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. And no matter what, I will be playing Zephyrus unless, like, you know, they just ban every Zephyr card on the ban list, which will never happen. But peace out, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night, and you will be hearing from me soon. Doses.